Since opening its doors in 1908, Thurgood Hall has been a center for scientific enlightenment at Howard University. It is home to the Department of Physics and Astronomy, a thriving department that prides itself on a rich tradition of conducting cutting-edge research. In fact, Howard University is a Research One institution. We are the only HBCU so designated. So I think from the standpoint of us being able to offer an education that a student would receive at a Research One institution, we are in the right position to do that. We have the latest equipment, the latest rotate. equipment in remote Fit sensing, open. latest equipment Double in meteorology, open. latest Double equipment in optics. Open. So we have some control systems that we work from the computer this first computer system you see here, this computer system allows us to enter the coordinates for some location in space. It could be a star or any other planetary um, object of interest. Howard struck me as soon as I came here as a family and a home. I felt really comfortable and really welcomed, especially in the physics department. The department offers four primary areas of specialization, which include spectroscopy and optics, atmospheric physics, high energy physics, and condensed matter physics. Now we have faculty members who do research in other areas, but those are our primary areas of interest and those are the primary areas in which we put the resources and try to recruit graduate students. Both undergraduate and graduate physics students have the opportunity to engage in cutting edge research alongside highly accomplished scientists. My name is Walter Lowe. I'm a professor of physics here at Howard. Uh, I'm a condensed matter physicist, and my uh, area of specialization is uh, X-ray scattering using synchrotron radiation. We use synchrotron radiation to study atomic positions within mostly crystals and how they actually move with time and, and how materials can, can change shape or change form or look at phase transition as a function of time. Dr. Lowe is responsible for building one of the end stations for the synchrotron radiation beam line at Argonne National Laboratory, considered the nation's preeminent synchrotron radiation source. In fact, his work, which has garnered much recognition, has placed Howard University's physics program as a leader in the advanced photon source arena. His students appreciate both his expertise and style of teaching. Dr. Lowe, to me, marked the beginning of the end of one phase or one sort of style of learning physics in the beginning of, of a, new, a new phase of, of learning physics. He is, his, his course is much, it's much more rigorous. Dr. Lowe, who really makes me appreciate physics in another way, you know what I'm saying? With Lowe, he makes you really feel the physics. It's almost like you're exploring along with him rather than just being like taught to. In his problem, there's a lot of concepts. You have to read everything very carefully. You're not going to be able to fake it. You have to know what you're talking about. He knows what you're trying to say, but until you say it, he won't even acknowledge that. My name is Dr. Prabhakar Misra. I'm a professor of physics at uh, Harvard University, and I head the laser spectroscopy laboratory in the Department of Physics and Astronomy. His present research activities involve using lasers to study the physical, biological, and chemical properties of free radicals short-lived molecules that are prevalent in the atmosphere. They are involved in many chemical reactions, in combustion processes, in hydrocarbon combustion especially. The machine I'm working on is called the Fourier Transform Infrared. So it's operate in the infrared reg region, which is from 400 wave number to 4,000 wave number. And uh, it gave me uh, the fingerprint of all molecules. I just need to put my sample. I can find out exactly what the sample is composed and what are the characteristics of my sample. You can study processes at a very fundamental level at the atomic and molecular level using lasers because lasers are so state selective. Dr. Mizra has also formed collaborative research activities with the School of Dentistry at Howard. Using lasers Mizra and his students can explore the molecular characteristics of virgin and decaying teeth. I've had several undergraduates work with me over the years, and they learn a whole range of skills. He's a very, very good advisor, and he's very helpful. He's a helpful man. He really helped me to get into the project. As soon as I get here, he had a, 
he had a dissertation topic for me, so I just came and started working. My name is Tristan Hupsch. I'm a professor of physics and mathematics at Howard University. Author of several textbooks in physics and a prolific publisher of scientific articles, Dr. Hubsch is world-renowned for his work in string theory. It's uh, the most modern type of theory that attempts to unify all of known physics. What that literally means is uh, consistent, logically consistent and philosophically consistent framework which would describe all of known physics phenomena. Among his collaborators is Dr. Abdul Rahman, an assistant professor of physics at Howard. Uh, several of Hoopsh's students work on uh, problems that are more physical. Uh, I'm interested in problems that are, are somewhat more mathematical in nature. Um, so the, the, the marriage of two, you know, it, it's, it's very good in terms of chemistry and in terms of productivity. So that's always good to know. I think it's a hot subject. I think it's uh, very important, intellectually very challenging. So I believe string theory is one of those subjects that eventually um, will become so ubiquitous as electromagnetism or indeed quantum mechanics. This is a situation where students, if they study string theory, they will end up learning enough mathematics and enough general principles and well enough general principles in physics that they will have little difficulty switching to another field. The physics program also offers an interdisciplinary master's and doctorate degrees in atmospheric sciences. Nestled in this 108-acre stretch of land, 14 miles from campus in Beltsville, Maryland, are a number of high-precision instruments used to conduct atmospheric measurements. The research that we do out there today is primarily focused on making atmospheric measurements and other environmental measurements. And these include things that will help us to do a better job in predicting the weather or determining pollutions or pollutants, determining ozone concentration, determining water vapor content, uh, things that are of interest to atmospheric physicists. I'm actually working for Dr. Joseph as his graduate, one of his graduate students. I'm going to use the, the data that we have in here to conduct my research. Uh, I'm going to focus on those surface fluxes computations to uh, improve the interaction between the ground and the atmosphere. So the ultimate result will be improvements of prediction of surface temperature, the temperature sensors measure actually the temperature of the air, of the atmosphere. So we have here on the tower nine different uh, temperature sensors at different levels. So basically what we have is the temperature of the air at those different levels. So we can see the temperature profile of the atmosphere. And uh, we have the same thing for the uh, humidity sensors. It's very, very, very interesting. and. Uh, to be able to work here in terms of doing field measurements. I'm Andrea Seeley and I am a PhD student in the Atmospheric Science Program at Howard University. This is a small program, that's probably why we have the benefit of having a hands-on advisor like Dr. Joseph. You see Dr. Joseph every day, we get to talk to him and what he's done, he schedules um, weekly meetings with us and um, he says basically um, every day after five o'clock I'm available to meet with students. So he's a very good person to work with. He's a very approachable person. If you have any problems, you can talk to him. Right. And then these are, these are get, some of these, these, this is like a gap in the satellite. Coming to work with his group has really helped me hone my computer skills. Because I'm working with an atmospheric model, I have to um, get my coding, understand how to do coding, Fortran, um, Fortran programs and shell scripts, and it has really helped me develop those skills. In addition to its nurturing research environment, students at Howard who enroll in physics courses enjoy the comforts of small class settings. Our undergraduate program is small in numbers, and we can talk a little bit about the individual faculty members later, but we have 20 faculty members in the department, so the ratio of undergraduate students to faculty is very favorable from the student standpoint. And the same is true for students enrolled in the graduate program. All of our faculty members, I believe, are good teachers. Some are actually excellent teachers, but 
they all do a very good job at teaching. They all take the time and the effort to work with students. They all understand the needs that students have from their experiences. James Lindsay, for example, has a reputation of being simply an excellent teacher at any level that he teaches. Uh, students will constantly come to us and say, is Dr. Lindsay going to teach this course? Simply because they understand him, have heard of him by reputation, and they know that he does an excellent job of explaining physical principles at a level that the students can understand. Linda C. also attracts a number of students into his research laboratory. Most of my work is in theoretical physics and computational physics, and in fact I'm the director of the computational physics lab, which is where we are now. We do research in a diverse set of areas in physics, which utilize the uh, facilities that we have. We've had uh, PhD students in uh, high energy physics, uh, atmospheric physics, material science, condensed matter physics, biophysics, optics, uh, many, many areas. And uh, all, all of these areas uh, are um, represented in, in, in a lot of the work that we do here. One of the nice things about uh, training in physics is that you learn how to solve problems. That's, that's, that's what we are about. And, and that is a very portable skill. I've had students who've gone on to be, become lawyers, engineers, doctors, politicians, uh, professors, of course, uh, but in many different areas. In keeping with the mission of Howard University, the Department of Physics and Astronomy is committed to attracting a diverse student population into its program. Our mission specifically says that we will work with students who may not have had all of the educational opportunities that others had in their preparation. We offer several scholarships for students. Uh, we have some full-time scholarships for a significant number of our students who want to go into a particular applied physics or into the professional physics tracks. It allows us to attract a wide range of students and highly motivated and well-qualified students. I do feel like Howard does offer a lot of key components that, that, that people just don't necessarily get in their life from uh, their professors or, or from their advisors. And, and I think a lot of these guys here are really, really grounded in the fact that they really work with a lot of raw talent and, and I think they do an excellent job at molding it into minds that can go on and do something in the future. Dr. Batra, as an advisor, he's extremely caring. He takes a lot of self-interest. Um, he goes out of his way to help me and he answers all of my questions and if he doesn't know any of the answers or if he isn't sure, he, he actually goes, he researches and he finds out about it and he gets back to me. Being in the department has been very good because it's very close-knit. You have a one-on-one -on -one interaction with your professors. You, um, you're able to go to speak to them about anything. It doesn't have to be physics and they're there looking out for you. As a minority student, you will do well in this program. Um, because the environment is going to nurture you in the right direction, make sure you have all the tools that are necessary for you to um, do well and perform well in the field whenever you leave Howard. My experience in general has been pretty positive. It's been a very supportive environment for me compared to some other environments I've been in. Students can gain enough expertise in computers, in electronics, in optics, to land good jobs and uh, I think uh, it's important for a physics department to place their graduates well and I think uh, the Howard Physics Department has done that quite well. Our mission statement requires us, and this is the physics department mission statement which is consistent with the university's mission statement, requires us to specifically work with students who are underrepresented in the area. We try to convince the student that the kind of environment that we have at Howard would be appropriate for them. We have a cadre of such advisors here at Howard who can work with them, who can understand many of the issues that they face, and at the same time can give them ex exposure to the best physics in the world. For more information about the Department of Physics and Astronomy at Howard University, visit www physics1.howard.edu or call 202-806-6245.